Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Dr. Nidhi Dhanam. I'm a consultant neurologist, Allied Hospital, Faisalabad. Today we will discuss hydrocephalus. First, its definition, then how CSF is produced, and uh, then the types of uh, hydrocephalus, and then how to manage hydrocephalus. First of all, brief intro to the hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is defined as an abnormal increase in the amount of CSF within the cranial cavity. That could be due to in its increased production, CSF may be overproduced, or due to its decreased absorption. These two are, are the mechanisms of hydrocephalus. Brief anatomy of CSF. Normal adult brain contains a, uh, about 150 ml of uh, CSF. The ventricular system holds about 20 to 50 ml of CSF. The rest of the cerebrospinal fluid is present in the subretinoid space. CSF is produced within the choroid plexus at a daily rate of 14 to 36 ml per hour. CSF is produced in the choroid plexus of uh, the lateral ventricles and then is uh, circulated to the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle to through different foramina and then to the subretinal spaces as well. CSF has uh, two major functions. One is the water jacket. It acts as a water jacket. That It means that an adult brain weighs about 1300 grams but due to the brain suspending in a water filled water like uh, fluid that is CSF its effective weight is only 45 grams. About 450 ml of uh, CSF is produced daily and adult brain contains only 150 ml. That It means that 300 ml of CSF is reabsorbed daily into the circulation and this reabsorbing CSF also effectively flushes waste products along with it. So hydrocephalus causes increased intracranial pressure, increased ICP. What's the mechanism of increasing intracranial pressure? Bra brain, blood and CSF are held in an inelastic container. This bony cavity contains brain, blood and CSF. So if there is a change in the volume of one element, there will be a if there is an increase in volume of one element, there will be a decrease in the uh, volume of the other two because brain cannot expand due to the inelastic container this bony uh, bony cavity so if there is an increase csf like hydrocephalus it will lead to decrease in brain parenchyma volume and as well it will lead to decrease in blood of the brain also there are two types of hydrocephalus. One is communicating hydrocephalus. It means that there is a communication between the ventricles and the subretinoid space. The common causes of communicating hydrocephalus are overproduction of CSF, for example, choroid plexus papilloma, blockage of CSF circulation, for example, due to very high proteins in the CSF, as in case of meningitis, it would lead to blockage of circulation. Blockage of CSF reabsorption, CSF hydrocephalus X vacuum, normal pressure hydrocephalus. I will define all of these terms in the coming slides. Then comes the other type of hydrocephalus that is non communicating hydrocephalus. There is no communication between the ventricles and the subretinal space. The most common cause of it is aqueductal stenosis. So, uh, number one is communicating hydrocephalus. Uh, its number one top cause is overproduction of CSF. Uh, CSF is overproduced in case of choroid plexus papilloma. Choroid plexus papilloma is present within the ventricles and it will lead to increased CSF production. Increased CSF production is here shown as hydrocephalus on the CT scan. 
leading to dilated enlarged ventricles. This is the body of the lateral ventricle actually. The other cause of uh, communicating hydrocephalus is hydrocephalus XVQ. In old age, there is a shrinking of the brain parenchyma and there is an increase in volume of the CSF. This is called hydrocephalus XVQ. Uh, the causes of hydrocephalus XVQ are stroke, previous strokes or other any forms of injury or chronic neurodegeneration. Uh, as a result of or as a sequence of old age could lead to hydrocephalus XVQ. This is CT brain of a uh, patient showing hydrocephalus XVQ. There are ventricles are uh, dilated or enlarged and there is also dilation of the subarachnoid spaces. Subarachnoid spaces have become more prominent. This is called hydrocephalus XVQ. The other cause of Communicating hydrocephalus, normal pressure hydrocephalus. Normal pressure hydrocephalus presents with a triad that is memory loss, gait disturbance that is called gluing gait or urinary incontinence. Uh, in this condition there is hydrocephalus but when we will de do the uh, cerebus, uh, CS of, the, of that pressure LP lumbar puncture of that patient to assess the pressure the pressure will be normal so there is hydrocephalus but with normal pressure this is called normal pressure hydrocephalus the treatment of normal pressure hydrocephalus and other hydrocephalus I will show you in the coming slides the most common cause of non-communicating hydrocephalus is aqueductal stenosis and then the management of hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus uh, is managed by ventriculo by ventriculoperitoneal or ventriculoatrial shunts. Uh, the aim of this surgery or this procedure is to divert the overproduction or uh, of a CSF in the brain uh, and divert it to the other uh, fluid filled cavities. For example. In uh, ventriculoperitoneal shunt, uh, there is this shunt is placed. This proximal, this is the called proximal end, and this is uh, the one-way valve, and this is the distal end. This proximal end will be placed in the ventricle, and then this distal end will be placed into the atrium, either or into the peritoneal cavity. So the increased CSF that will be produced will be diverted or diverged from the cranial cavity into the atrium or directly into the peritoneum. So the increase, there will not be any increase in pressure, there will not be any signs of increasing intracranial pressure. This was the management of hydrocephalus. Thank you for your patient viewing, visual and hearing this presentation.